Welcome back to the Football Terrace. Trending last night into the morning, some shocking revelations, claims, stories, allegations and information presented to us by a highly credible journalist, Roman Molina, leading French journalist who took to a space last night on Twitter and told us a list, they gave us a plethora of, of information, stories and insight into some of the dark goings on within football. And although the majority of the time on the football terrace, we, we prefer to focus on previews, match reviews, transfer rumours, you know, things that are, are exciting and fun, even some of the painful things that are fun to rivals. But we've always been a channel that will tackle and talk about the taboo subjects, the subjects that are trending, the subjects that have upset people. And I'm not here to cast aspersions. I'm not here to uh, say his claims are right or wrong. We, I want to wait now for the evidence to come out and the next stage of this to be revealed. I love the sport of football, what I see on the pitch. Does it shock me that there are that there is a dark side to it? Where generally in life, where there is wealth, where there is power, where there is large sums of money, you get corruption and you get a sordid, seeded, abusive side that's often connected to it. We've seen this with many industries from acting, singing, you know, the, the, the corporate industry. So football, am I surprised that it's that these revelations are coming out? Absolutely not. I do want to take your calls. I do want to speak to you about it as well. In case some of you may have stories, some of you may want to express your thoughts and feelings on it. Of course, very similar. feels very similar to a few years ago when, it came out about a number of the English clubs who had covered up long-standing cases of paedophilia within the, the British game. And I kind of have that same feeling today, a sense of as a, as, a, as a man, as a father, a sense of sickness, a worry for, for the for the global culture of football when, when we go through some of these allegations and stories. And I know that French football is kind of centered around a lot of this, but I'd be, I saw a few people tweeting last night, France should be kicked out of major tournaments. And listen, let ye who has not um, sinned be the one to cast the first stone. I, there's allegations that touch multiple leagues. And my view is this. If the vast majority of what Roman said last night is true, it is of my opinion that senior people across the game in France, Italy, Spain, England, Brazil, America, they will know about this. It isn't a big world when you're in it. So I want to gauge your views and your opinions on, on this, on this. I, mean, I just couldn't, honestly, this morning I was looking at the, the United stories, the Chelsea injury news, and I'm going to be blunt. I couldn't bring myself to talk about it when this was going on. It, it, it For me, it didn't sit right. It didn't feel right um, to sit there and ignore it. It, it isn't what the football uh, terrace has ever been about. Uh, it, it, this, this impacts fans. This really does. This impacts fans massively and, and fans have got a lot to say about it. And that is what we're here to do today. The link um, that there is a link in the um, live comment section for you to phone in and give us your thoughts and your feelings on this. I want to go through, before we do that, I want to go through some of the uh, claims that have been made. I'm going to put them up on the screen here so that you can see them as well. And uh, as already stated, there's so many things to kind of delve into and look at. But, you know, Deschamps injuring players on purpose a player pranking another by introducing him to a minor and having him sleep with her. Uh, lots of abuse and, and sexual assault claims, sexual abu abuse cases um, at the, the French Federation of Football for Women's Team. Ben this is the huge from a Premier League perspective. Benjamin Mendy has done unimaginable stuff. Man City more reluctant to sign French players now. And that was one that stood out to me hugely because... I'm not going to sit here and act, oh, you know, it's this French football that's got the problem. I've already said that's a nonsense. But what stood out in that claim to me was, is there a cultural issue there? Why would Man City not want to buy any other French players for Benjamin Mendy's actions? Is there an issue culturally? And it may not even, it is, you know, is it something that's, that starts at a youth level and goes right through into the adult game? I want to gauge what they, what you think they, what what you think City's issue is there. It says some clubs and agents have paid transfer market to pimp their players' data. 
confirms Macron played a part in Benzema's return. The French French justice does nothing after uh, Molina's warning. So I think this is one of the reasons that he's come out. That was a, that was a big one to me. The French authorities have, have pretty much ignored this. And like I've said already, I don't think this is just France, even though this is centering around it. Links to Chinese triads, betting websites, and, and the Premier League is in triads linked to the Premier League and betting websites. Some stuff on Marseille and Villarreal. Um, the person who translated didn't look too much into it. Assassination attempts. Some racism from French coaches. French sports journalists, um, quite popular too, did shady stuff. So that's the, he's very, very, um, that's uh, Bafazi, who's very, very, I think I said I pronounce if I said, I've butchered his name, I'm sorry. Very credible journalist that we all look at. And that's the interesting thing. Where is this can of worms going to end? And I'm sure it's going to then spread into other areas. I'm sure it's just not the, this level of, and some of the things on here, uh, agents paying transfer market to make their players' data look better. No one's going to cry about that. That that is that isn't something that I'm going. Oh my god, it's shocking. It's it's more the the child abuse, the allegations of rape, sexual assaults, racism, sexism, huge levels of corruption that are going on. That's the stuff that that, that needs to be addressed. That was that was they were the things that hit hard. I mean, it's some uh, one of the biggest things. Al Qaeda uses football to recruit new members, and that was a huge claim. And it's well, you know what's football doing out here to protect? What is football doing out here to protect these young people? And there's far more claims, and you probably read more than I. Um, I kind of I was going through all of them. Some of them were so outlandish. I'm like, really? How? There was talk of a poo party where a player had people poo in his mouth for a laugh. And do you know what it is for me? If that's what somebody's into, great knock yourself out but this stuff appears to be going on at and during football times that's the responsibility of the football clubs the federations the owners the management to put a stop to this now if i run around a business what someone goes home into the privacy of their own home and does i can't control if they're doing it in my staff room it's on me it, it, it's honestly just it, it, it's mad and there's a comment here from twisted twisted bubba which I think is is a very fair comment where he says, uh, Terry, um, did this guy prove what he said? Is there any evidence? Now, that's the next stage of this. I would now want to see witness statements, interviews, some evidence of this. I can't, Im I mean, by all accounts, Roman is regarded as a very credible journalist. And I'm, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not trying to sort of downplay this and sound flippant. Unless he has had a literal breakdown an absolute breakdown and meltdown and just lost his mind due to terrible mental health. I, I don't see the mileage in this. If he's made even two or three of these claims up, his career is over. His life is, is, is some people suggest that his life could literally be over with what he said and who he's exposed. But I don't see why someone makes this up. There's one thing telling porky pies about people behind their back on the sly, slipping it into people's ears privately. And then once you've got it into enough people, you can kind of set that line as fact. There's another thing going on the internet in a space with 70,000 people, including The Rock. The Rock was was listening to this and making these claims. There's no way, there's no way back for you in, in any, you know, he if he's lying about this, he won't even be able to get a job flipping burgers at McDonald's collecting trolleys at a supermarket, picking up, you know, picking up rubbish bins, working as a labor on a building site. And I'm I'm using those as examples because they're a far cry from being a journalist, let alone ever writing again. He'll struggle to pick up uh, uh, any kind of job. So his career will be done. It'll be finished. It'll be over. Uh, there's no doubt about it at all. Um, Twitter hack. Come on. Stop twisted. I know you like asking silly questions, but that's 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 crazy. Chris George here says he's a credible journalist, apparently. And and exactly that is that's that is exactly what I read. I, I read exactly the same thing that he's a highly credible journalist. I personally don't know too much about him. Um, I've never come across his work. I've clicked on a few things. The majority of it is he's not like some of the some of the um foreign press who 
share things in English and, and in the native tongue so it's easier to follow. It's, it's generally all in French. So, of course, it's not really been passed my way too often, but it, it is a shocking day. And, and, you know, if these things end up turning out to be true, the face of football could, could, can change massively, especially as my, as my hunch. My hunch on all of this is that this isn't an isolated French football issue. Some of the things he spoke about, you know, Allegri, some of the things I kind of, I'm, I'm ring fencing, like Allegri, Allegri reportedly and allegedly money laundering. The reason I say I, I always slow down on that is there's a lot of players in Spain that were done for fraud a few years ago. Alexis Sanchez, I know Jose was done, etc. That type of money movement they did is something like 80% of European countries that isn't illegal. In fact, it's encouraged. So there are some times where one nation can look at something as being an illegal action, but actually we're looking, oh, that's normal over here. So I'm, I'm always, all those types of things, I'm always a little more uh, cautious with because of how things transcend across cultures and nations and what's acceptable here may not be acceptable there, blah, blah, blah. When it comes to the, 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 the real seedy dark stuff, the one thing about life is this. It doesn't matter what country you're born in, what religion you follow, whether you're an atheist, whether you're a ma male or female. Some of the allegations that have come out, everybody thinks is wrong. They, they, they transcend borders, laws, cultures, as, as I say. And that's the stuff now that we want to see investigated. You know, I expect it. What's interesting today, I, I kind of get that it was very late last night when this came out. So the publications in England haven't gone with it. If I I'll be very disappointed in 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 the in the media within the UK if within the next I don't know two or three days we haven't started we may not see the fruits of this labor straight away but I expect the kind of spotlight teams and the investigate 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 I can't say the word the investigation departments of, of newspapers now to be delving into this if they haven't been already but what you tend to find with the media sometimes is they're buried stories for years. The, I watched a, a film not long ago called Spotlight, very different, well, fairly similar stuff, really, uh, involved with the, the, the Catholic Church in America. And it turned out that the, the, the Boston Globe had sat on some of these stories for years for one reason or another. So I'm sure more is going to come out about this and it's going to be intriguing, but equally painful to see um, what transpires with this. It really, really is. Um Let's, let's look at some of your comments that are coming through. We've got a few calls to take. Maria Williams here says, as someone who's experienced um, how someone in power can abuse, uh, this is shocking, but also not surprising as it happens to lots of people who have power. Uh, and, and you know what, Maria Williams, you're beyond, you're beyond right. And you know, I was very fortunate in my sporting life, football teams, rugby teams, cricket teams at school, my martial arts career, I, I never experienced anything. I never even witnessed anything or anything. I thought, oh, that's strange. It was very clean and nice. And I was very fortunate and, and lucky personally. I never told this story before, but I will. It seems relevant. When I was about 17, maybe 18, I I wanted to be a stuntman. That, that was a small, not even a stuntman, a screen fighter. So you, one of the fighters in a fight scene on a, on a, on a, a script uh, on in a movie, uh, Jackie Chan-esque, if, if that makes sense. I, I dreamed of doing it. And I'd worked on a few sets and a few slow budget films and, and a few TV shows. It was going well. I had an agent who was like, oh, you need to get equity, though. You need to get an equity card. I didn't really understand it all. So I kind of listened to him. He was a little bit older, giving me advice. And he was a lot older in his 50s, giving me advice. And he sort of said to me a few times, oh, would you ever be interested in normal acting or doing some modeling if opportunities came up? Now, just to, to point out, I had hair back then. I was in very good shape. Um, never wanted to be a model, but he was like, if an opportunity comes up, would you do it? And at the time, I'm like 17, 18. I'm like, yeah, of course, I, I, I will. If it's, if it's something I'm comfortable doing, the money's good, why not? And we went to this lunch once with this guy who said oh, he's putting together, a, he's doing like a calendar shoot thing. And I, I just, was like, okay, cool, not a problem. My agent left, and I was left at lunch with this guy. And he kept on, I could tell he was flirting with me. And I think as, as a younger man, I just felt a little bit, I'm much more comfortable in my own skin now at 35. But at 17, 18, I wasn't. I felt it very uncomfortable. 
I was in a really awkward place, a very quiet restaurant, and it's like, what's going on here? And essentially, the guy kind of said to me, like, you know, if if you date me, if you come out with me a little bit, then I'll I'll put you in the calendar. Essentially, saying have sex with me, and you'll get this job. And it was it was fairly well paid. This was in like the early early two thousands. I was very young, and it was something like ten thousand pound I'd be paid. And then for every additional country that the pitches were released in, you got like this this thing. And he kind of said, oh, I said like about 40, 50 grand. And at the time, that was like, wow, that'll cover my expense. That'll cover me for like two or three years as I'm pursuing this career. But it was the way it was this kind of underlying um, request of, it was almost, yeah, I want you to be seen with me and come out with me and and, and be on my arm. And this guy was easily in his, in his mid to late 50s. And... I, the, the level of discomfort that I felt and, and and awkwardness, but anger as well at the same time was just crazy to me. And it was one of the kind of things that pushed me away from that 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 industry. And this was that sort of the entertainment industry. You know, I had experiences on sets where very similar things had happened. I had a director that kind of said, oh, we don't need you anymore, but you're welcome to stay around. And and, and it, you could tell what he was suggesting, stay with me if you, if you want to be on set and we'll keep paying you the day rate and things. And I just found it really awkward and upsetting. I think what helped me, like my, my fighting background, my, you know, what I did, I, I was fairly strong in that regard. <laughs> I was quite loud and aggressive and I kind of pushed back against it. But I did that and then was cut off from working in certain groups. So very soon I left the industry and I never really shared that story publicly with anybody before. The reason why I didn't pursue that career, I, I found it very difficult. I found it seeded and nasty. So when uh, someone said, how did I respond to him? Like legit, I was polite actually. And I, I, I always regret that. I always regret being saying no, no, thank you. I almost said no, thank you to him. I felt so awkward and like weak at the time. I said, no, thanks. What? What I wish, I remember being on the train on my way home, and what I wished I'd done is smacked him in the mouth because that's what I wanted to do. But in my head, I was like, oh. you know, you get that feeling where if I do if I do that, I just knew I would be the one who would get in trouble. But I went on, moved on, got out of that industry. Um, and that wasn't the only reason, but it was a big part. And then years later, when everything came out about Weinstein, you know, like when you hear a story, but you're not shocked. You're like, okay, I, I didn't know he was doing it, but it's like I was in that industry for like a year and had two or three really serious incidents like that happen to me. And I was fortunate enough to be strong enough to walk away from it. Not everybody, not everybody is. People are sometimes people are in diet. I, 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 I had a home, I, you know, my dad and my mum. I had my brothers, I had a support network, not, not supporting me for that reason, but I had people I could go to. I, I had the kickboxing club and karate stuff and my friends. I never told anybody about it, but it was like I, I, I had people around me to be able to help me. So hearing yesterday some of these stories that have come out, it's like I know this stuff goes on. I, I'm, I'm just not shocked ever at all when it comes to like – these types of stories wherever there is money wealth and power and i'm talking about all those things together you find these these nasty nasty underbellies and they they try and pray and i think what it was is they looked at me and i think they heard a working class lad and i think maybe they assumed there could be an element of desperation there could be an element of of, of me being isolated or cut away from people and fortunately i, I just wasn't in that space what put, a, put what put a few people off because I got told this. This is how weird it was. Like people to talk, other people would talk about it. Oh, I heard, I heard so and so uh, made a, made a pass at you, and I'm sort of like, but, so you all know he does this, and that was the bit that got to me. Everybody else, and he goes, oh yeah, he didn't want to push you too well because he heard that you, you know, you, you compete, for, you know, you fight, you fight and compete for Team GB. It's like I'm just looking around, and, and the only thing I kind of regret is not kind of exposing it. But at the time, social media didn't exist, didn't really know what to do. And that's something I kind of regret now looking back again as, as, a, as a father now and as an older person. So when I see these types of stories, I they resonate with me because I was very lucky. I don't consider myself a victim. I don't consider myself a survivor. I, you know, I was very fortunate that nothing 
you know, I had a just very I was, I was fortunate, I would say, really, that, that just, I was in the right place at the right time as a person. But just strange stuff in, in this world. I remember doing a photo shoot and the guy taking the pictures was, I can't believe I th he thought I'd be this naive. But he said, oh, you're not quite got the right look on your face. I said, what look? He goes, oh, you need to look. I remember him saying to me, you've got to look sexier. And I was like, well, how do I do that? I don't know. I'm, I was 17, 18. And he said, this is what he said to me. What a lot of people do on shoots is I'm only taking pictures of like your chest area and above. So like touch yourself. And as you're feeling the arousement of that, it will give you the look on your face you need. And I did tell him, nah, I just said, why am I doing that? Like, I, it, this was the kind of stuff that was going on. So I'm just, as I said, I'm just not surprised at all that this has come out. It, it doesn't, why the why Roman has waited till now, I don't know um, what his reasoning is. I don't ever think that's a, I don't think that's a reason to try and discredit him. You know, everyone's got their rationales, their reasons. I've never spoke about the things I've just said in the last 10 minutes publicly ever. And I think only three or four people in the whole world know. I didn't think I was going to say it on this stream, but I trust you, my community, and I feel strong enough to sit here and say it. But that's why I, I had to speak about this today because of my experiences and my experiences don't compare to some of the things we've read. I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a drop in the ocean in comparison, but, it, it, it's just a, a a nasty, nasty world out there. It really, really is. It really, really is indeed. Um, I'm going to speak to a few people that are waiting to come on and have their say. Mo's on the line here to, to speak about this. What are you saying, Mo? No, I mean, you know, I, I, I didn't really, you know, know what's going on. I must I must have missed that. Just joined, joined the stream now. Uh, yeah. I just want to speak about Brendan Rogers, Terry. Uh, we're not we're not talking about that on this show, my bro. That that isn't for this show, my friend. Um, we we can chat about that later on in the day. Is that cool? Cool, bro. All right, Thank mate. You. No worries, dude. Top top man. Thank you. Uh, B man is with us here. What are you saying, B man? Um, well, uh, I'm I'm part of me is kind of glad this is all coming out because as as a football community, all of us have this um view of football that somehow it's we detach it from the reality that we face every day we we have this uh sort of pure vision this pure ideal of football that no this cannot be happening not to football not in our game it can happen to us in our day-to-day -day lives we can experience these kind of things but no 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 it's not happening in football and you see the sad part is terry is that let me take uh the benjamin mendy uh example this happens to in, in all walks of life. As long as you are performing and you're bringing in your money for the peoples that are above, they are willing to tolerate anything as long as you are performing. But let me tell you something. As soon as you stop performing, oh, now they're holding you accountable. Oh, now they want you to be accountable. They want you to go and face the letter of the law. You see, these kind, this is the contradiction. He is not performing on the pitch. He's not the player that they were hoping to be. And I'm telling you right now, if you think Man City or any other football club, when something comes up with their player, they had no idea. That is nonsense. They know exactly what's going on. They will bury it as long as you, the individuals that are doing these detestable things, are performing and bringing in the money they expect you to bring and the performances that you, they expect you to bring. As long as you are performing, go even in, into the United States in every walk of life. You look at even a guy like, um, what's this guy's name uh, from Hollywood that was sleeping with, uh, around uh, every this Epstein and then there's uh, the Wein other one, Terry. The Weinstein. Weinstein. Did he yeah. go to prison? Yeah, I think he is no. in prison now, yeah. No, I think uh, Weinstein's in prison. Yeah. You, you, yeah. They ordered him to go I think he's going through um, a, a, some sort of rehab. Uh, they gave him a very light sentence because he needs to go to some rehab for him to... Yeah. Uh, I think he, he claimed that he it, was addicted to sex. Something yeah, I, because, I, hear you, I hear you, man. I, just, I was going to say, like... Hey, go on, mate, go on. 
But if you are a regular guy and you do that type of thing, since you're not bringing any money, you're going to get held accountable. Look at a guy like, um, uh, look at R. Kelly. R. Kelly is a very great example. These, the, if you go and listen to guys from Hollywood, ne, they will tell you, we've been hearing these stories for years. We know we've seen it. But the people at the top protected him. But look, now he's being held accountable. Do you know why? Because he's not bringing in, he's not performing anymore. He's more trouble than he's worth. Now they're throwing him under the bus. And and, mate, that, knew what and, and, and and that's and that's the point I'm I'm making here. You know, it's it's this is where it, it that's where it troubles me the most. And I hear you completely. Every now and then, somebody's kind of scapegoated and thrown under the bus. And that's why nobody's, you know, nobody here is free of guilt no nobody's free of guilt at all uh when it comes to there'll be newspapers that know about this there'll be people in, inside of football that know we had we had it in the uk only a few years ago with the the, the covering up of the, you know the paedophilia claims that a lot of clubs um including some of some of the size of chelsea and that isn't on the hands of the current ownership of chelsea these things happened in the in the, in the 70s and in the 80s but People in football knew it was going on, but everybody was silent about it. And I think that that's the problem. That That's the real problem here, that everybody's too... I've said it before and I'll say it again. If it turned out, if there was a story that came out and there was a Man United legend that had done these things or had helped cover this stuff up at the club, I would stop supporting my club until every single element of that person was removed pictures, statues, their, their name etched on things, whatever it may be. I would want them eradicated from the history um, of my football club because it's a case of you, you have to take action against this. There, there is no excuse for covering up the heinous, nasty, uh, seeded, life-damaging. De life you know, it damages people for life, this kind of thing. And, yeah, it's it, it's terrible what's going on. And I think, I think everybody from fans has to demand better. I think the, the club, I think the journalists have to, like, Launch. I know that it's not fun. It's not great to hear these things. It doesn't make anybody feel good. But if you shine a light on it and you expose it, it's far less likely to take shape. The problem you've got in every walk of life from religion, big business, entertainment, the, the, the music industry, the sporting industries, there is such corruption. There is such seededness there is there is pedophilia there is so much from top to bottom it's just it's just it's just terrible mate it really is uh thanks for calling in mate and having your say really appreciate it b man we'll speak to you again soon brother thank you very much indeed it's um yeah he's absolutely right in what he says there and i, th I think the, the biggest thing is this like what is it the someone here says why was the rock listening why should the rock not listen to it it, it, this this should be something everybody is interested in listening to. This is more important than team news today. This is more important than anything. And yes, look, football will be on at the weekend and it's a great escapism for people. I'll be watching it. I'll be enjoying it. Uh, but I'm going to keep my eye on this. I'm gonna, I want to know what's going on with this moving forward now on our regs. You know, I will be, you know, following this up, chasing people. You know, where are the British newspapers doing the inv investigations? In fact, all the different kind of protective services in the UK that are out there meant to be protecting children and youngsters, I want them Monday morning, if if not this afternoon, knocking on the doors of these football clubs going, look, we're just here to do it. Like a, I don't know what the right word for it is. I'm not from the industry, but like the health inspector can just turn up at a restaurant and check that you've got your practices right. Just start turning up and, make, and, and doing investigations, making sure this isn't, isn't going on. But I want to see this is going on and I want it to be transparent enough to tell the public that what we're doing, because, you know, we all want, I'd love one of my one of my children to grow up and be good enough to be a professional footballer. But when I hear stories like this, I ain't letting them go live in dorms by themselves. It ain't happening. I, I just I'm, you know, I'm I'm terrible like that. Like one of these, if I know something's dangerous for, for one of my children, they ain't going. So I, I you know, I, I just not. I don't think good enough to play football. But yeah, they've got to do something, man. Things have got to be done. Uh, Matt's on the line with me now. What are you saying, Matt? Yeah, big up Terry, man. I mean, this is just going, it's absolutely crazy. I mean, I did a video on this today, this morning or last night for you lads, and it was just absolutely insane. I mean, now what goes, what, what happens from here? You know, we've seen this thing from Benjamin Mendy, Ferland Mendy. Is there going to be any accountability for these players? I mean, what we've seen with Benjamin Mendy is, you know, like we've heard the claims of what's happened, but last week he was caught in Abu Dhabi having a party. So no, no sanctions are being applied to any of these players. So now what are we going to see from these players and that French coach and even the president of France coming up with anything? 
I'm telling you, friends, uh, uh, Terry, Terry, I don't see anything happening with this. As much as I hate to say this, the uncomfortable truth is we're not going to see any sanctions provided with this if the fans don't speak out. Look what we did with the Super League. Let's do the same. What we did with the Super League and bring this attention on and on and on. And what we've done with Benjamin Mendy, we've got to keep doing the same and keep publicizing this. As you said, British media need to publicize this. This needs to be everywhere. Like it's a normal transfer news or something. This has to be everywhere. Front page, British, Australia, America, China, India, everywhere needs to be publicized because this is unfortunately very bad. And this upsets a lot of other players as well. Look at the Mendy, uh, my, my player, Edward Mendy. Now he's going to be unfortunately targeted by this just because of the last name he has. So they've now up upheld a bad reputation to their last name. So it just doesn't affect the players. It affects the clubs, the fans, the other players plays with the same last name, so it's, it's, it's a really unfortunate to see. It, it absolutely is, and <clears throat> it is. The, the problem that you have, I understand why certain people don't speak up, because if the industry is, mm. is, is shutting you down, if you speak up and your word don't get out, and you expect it to, but sometimes, and it gets covered up quickly, you know, you've exposed yourself, you might lose your income, your livelihood, be able to support your family, and then they get away with it anyway. This needs a collective effort, and full support from 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 fans I, I kind of you know it shouldn't be something that's here today gone tomorrow and then doesn't get spoken about again i i remember when all this stuff came out in the uk about the the the, the, the cover-ups in the uk i was mortified at the lack of attention at the time i remember speaking to a lot of people that owned other fan channels i'm like none of you have made one bit of content on it there was a, a, I, I remember going i remember i made two or three really big bits of content that we pushed out nobody watched it we, we, I was working with another company at the time. We tried pushing this stuff into articles. They're like, no, we don't really want it. We don't want to do that sort of stuff. And I'm like, this is kids being touched at our football clubs that we support every mm. week. Why do you want to talk about it? Like, it's crazy to me. It's, it's always, I, I know it's not nice and it's not like, oh, I want to read that. That sounds fun. And yeah. I like having but fun. But it's uncomfortable these, truth. It's, but it's you the have truth to keep an eye on it. And, and yeah. it, it's, it's, it's true. And look, I have a viewership of about two and a half million people a month, which is amazing. It's, it's nowhere near the size of, of other publications out there who can keep this in the public eye and they keep the pressure on the authorities. If they, the authorities know people are watching, they're less mm. likely to allow things to happen. When you feel like you're in the shadows and no one's around, no one can see you, no one's hearing it. It's very, it's easier in my opinion to operate um in, in these ways it, it really really is bro it really really is it's a matt thanks go on mate go on make a point sorry i was gonna say quickly yeah it's and it's absolutely unbelievable to see french people coming out with this you know and even us english people who don't, don't understand french we're still talking about this which is great 60s i think someone mentioned the, the rock was was on last night in the space and that's a, um, uh, unbelievable to see that he's he's uh you know driving and putting his power in into the football space so hopefully he can do something with it as well but yeah be up to terry hope everyone has a great day you know cheers, cheers mate listen matt look after yourself buddy speak to you soon thank you very much Thanks, indeed mate. viewers do us a favor we need to get this video out there we need to get it share it on your socials all smash the like button now as well please it's really important um that we do that um who knows here it says roman will be arrested um it's so deep he's telling the truth but watch it get peak for him I mean, again, that, that wouldn't shock you if you heard a story like he's fell down the stairs. It, you'd be like, oh, you wouldn't go, oh, my God, that's weird. You wouldn't. You wouldn't think that's weird. Josh is on the line now. What are you saying, Josh? How you doing, Terry? I'm OK. It's been my a friend. long time. Yeah, it's been a long time. It has been a long time. What, what are you here to say, my friend? So I just have a couple of points. Uh, I think a lot of this comes down to a few uh, philosophical observations. The first of which being the age-old adage that absolute power corrupts absolutely. And uh, in this day and age, corruption and power is all tied to obviously finance and influence. Influence obviously coming down to your audience, your reach and your connections. And unfortunately, our uh, limitations are defined by consequence. And when you have enough power, you realize that most of your actions are inconsequential. And that tends to enable some of the more sinister, nefarious and underhanded components of our psyche, which is why a lot of these people tend to get away with the actions that they get away with. And um, mm. I think what the strongest counter to that in this day and age is, is that we're living in an age of information, freedom of in information, um, decentralized information. And I think the onus just like you say, is on, on us as a community 
with these communities of mutual interest to share this information to get as much eyeballs on these issues because the moment that everything is publicized in a decentralized manner in an unfiltered uncensored manner that's when you can really start to get to the crux of the issue and start eliminating mm. those entrenched powers that exist yeah i couldn't agree with you more <clears throat> the problem the problem that you end up facing with that is when it touches on somebody's club they love and I, I get a feeling it's very easy this morning for english fans of the english games you don't need to be english but just fans of the premier league to be like oh, it's not us so it's very easy to push this news and be like authorities come in and do it i feel there would be large proportions big or big percentages that if it was their club under accusation today, it would be, where's the proof first? I'm not condemning yeah. it. I'm not, give me the proof first. You say my legend did that. Where's the proof? You say my young player did that. Give me the proof first. When it's somebody else's player, it's, have you heard the news? Wow. And you spread it and you share it. You you might still remain, you know, like me, you're still innocent until proven guilty, irrespective of the charge. But that's the problem. When it starts moving into your people, your club, your circles, yeah. things you love, Everybody becomes a huge cynic as opposed to going, we need an investigation. I, I know how I would be. And it's, I want, I want to see the investigation. I want, I want transparency. I want this yeah. resolved. It would bother me if it was my club on numerous levels, but I just know how I'd react. You know, the same as if it was a family member of mine for these types of crap, it'd be like, he's accused of that. Well, show me like this, let's, let's, let's delve into it. Like you don't ignore these things. And I think that's the problem we have. If this now touches the English game, Everybody won't be as open and as fr uh, wanting to talk. P people just, they will turn a blind eye until there's like categoric video evidence and, and like cast iron proof. They'll go, just an allegation. They'll yeah. back their people. That's the problem. They'll back their people over it. We've seen it before. Yeah, it becomes cognitive dissonance at, at, at the end of the day. We, we tend to want to justify the actions of those uh, whom we hold most dear to us. Because, you know, there's just that unwillingness to accept that they have, in fact, committed some form of an atrocity. But what we say, and I've heard you mention this uh, on, a, on a number of occasions, uh, support is not expressed through unadulterated um, love or affection. Sometimes it's the withheld, or withholding of affection and love that, that is the strongest showing of support. Sometimes it requires critique. Yes, yeah, it, it absolutely is, you know, and I remember the, uh, uh, away from seeded stuff, there was a, a mother who did, I think, one of the most powerful things a parent could do. Her, her daughter, who was fairly privileged, very well respected in the community, educated, uh, had, all, had all these scholarships on the way, had a really good life ahead of her from the East End of London. She decided to join in with the, with the looting element of the London riots, and she came home with all this stuff. And her mother was furious and told her to get rid of it. Do not do it. I can't believe you're doing it. You know, you're not out there protesting some of the cultural and political issues. You're just out there stealing. That's disgusting. Told her off. And she said, I got rid of it all, mum. Sorry. Two days later, she caught her with more stuff. So her mother took her to the police station and handed her own daughter in. And she ended up with a criminal record. And some would say that's a disgrace to do that to, do that to your kid. Oh. I looked at it along the lines of she gave her child a chance. And she turned around and went, I don't need to listen. Everybody, Everybody's doing it. And I just looked at that as a lot of people said there's terrible pairing in. The lesson and the ripple effect from there on in, I, I thought it was a massive one. And um, sometimes tough love w w will fix somebody sooner. Like it, it, it can fix a problem rather than prolonging it for, for a longer period of time, you know. And it's, yeah. it's, it's very important to do that at times. And I think that with this, you know, if it's your club, if it's one of your favorite players, don't throw them under a bus. Still, I would still want to wait. If somebody made a massive allegation against a big Man United um, legend of the past, I would want it. In, I wouldn't want it buried. I'd want it investigated. Because ideally, in my mind, oh, I'd love it to be untrue. I'd love him to be innocent or her to be innocent. However, let's go and do the investigation because if they're not, I don't want to have blind support for someone who's done something so egregious and disgusting that that it turns my stomach. So. I, that's me though, and I can't speak for others. What I, I just based on what I've seen in the past, a lot of heads would suddenly become buried in sands. But Josh, great call, my friend. Thanks for coming on and having your say. Really appreciate it, brother. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, JD's on the show with me next. How you doing, Jay? Good, uh, how you doing? I'm not. I'm, I'm okay, my friend. How about yourself? 
Can't complain. First and foremost, I just want to say big ups to you for sharing that information with us in terms of your own experiences, even if it's just a close brush with um, potentially being um, uh, sexually assaulted. I mean, it's still important to kind of hear that, um, especially as men as well, as well, because we don't really talk about those types of vulnerable situations. Mm. Yeah, I but pre- um, I appreciate that. Thank, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Jay. Sure. I think I think kind of as we kind of as I kind of as the previous caller kind of mentioned and just kind of as we think about this thing uh, moving forward, I just want to just put a message out to the fans, which is that, um, I mean, as consumers of this content and the consumers of this entertainment, I mean, what is our responsibility to our fellow human beings? Right. And um, it's a difficult question because um, like um, was pointed out by one of the earlier callers, look, uh, we want to watch football so that we can kind of like divorce ourselves from our realities. Um, but now kind of when reality comes in, we're kind of like saying in the face, what is our, what is our uh, responsibility there? And not to say that it's easy and not to say that um, there's like, it, there's not one right answer for it, but the choice that you ha- kind of have to make it as a moving forward is like you pointed out, if um, your favorite player is uh, kind of brought up, um, if somebody who, yeah, somebody who you know is kind of brought up, is that what, yeah, what, what part can you kind of play to kind of support the process kind of go- uh, reaching its final conclusion and what happens if that final conclusion happens? So, I mean, now we've heard these stories. Um, we've seen some names that have kind of been brought up by Romain. Um, so what is the responsibility? The responsibility of us is to acknowledge the, acknowledge the accusations, demand that the people who, wherever you are, if you're sitting in France right now and there's a lot of French players who are accused, what is your responsibility? It's your responsibility is to demand the French FA to make sure that, that thing is investigated, to make sure that all parties are held accountable and move on. And that's all you can really do right now. So call out. Send, send out your tweets, um, reach out to your, your government officials wherever you are. And I mean, my country, Kenya, uh, we were just mentioned in there that we have 16 accounts versus um, everybody else has two accounts for Kenya FA. What can we do here in Kenya? All our, I mean, Kenyans on Twitter, we're a very powerful group. So I'm sure we're going to be talking about our Kenya FA for a while. But yeah. yeah. No, I, I hear you. And I always find in these situations, you never fix anything until you self-police. So Exactly. It's very easy. If we take it away from these allegations, I, I remember we went for a period in England where, and I got into, I, I fell out with a lot of fan channels over this and they still haven't spoke to me since, but I stand by what I said. Mm. I would see a fan channel do a video on racism when it was one of their players or one of them as content creators attacked or abused. Mm-hmm. But then when it was th- someone from their fan base that did it to somebody else's, I'm not saying they condoned it, but there was no content. There was no tweets. There was no noise. And it bothers me because I think if a Man United fan or a Man United content creator does something, I feel more of an, I I don't have collective responsibility. I am not responsible. I don't Mm -hmm. feel sorry for that person. I want to apologize on behalf of them because we're separate people. But I feel like policing someone that's part of the same group as me in terms of supportership is is, is important. If I only call out Liverpool and Arsenal and Chelsea fans that that do racist racist or sexist homophobic things in the stands, but when Man United fans do it, I keep my head. I'm scared of losing my Man United fan base watching me or whatever. And that that for me is is what needs to happen in this instance. It's very easy for the English and the Germans at the moment and whoever else to go after the French. You know, I, I did read some of the stuff about that goes on in different African nations. And yeah. am I surprised? No, I mean, you just look at the, 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 the Ahmad story coming out of Man United, where he essentially mm. had to live with people that weren't his parents and he pretended they were his parents. That's why he doesn't like to use the name. I think it's, I think Traore. Yeah, 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 Traore, yeah. yeah, Traore isn't his name. It was given to him. Exactly. because he was his, And you're thinking he was quite fortunate. Like, there's yeah. some of those stories that are more corrupt as in, well, look, we'll pay you to pretend that's your kid just so we can get him into our academy. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a part of me that sympathizes with that because it's like yep. they're trying to get somebody from one place to another better their life great but what if that family that took him in were pedophiles exactly what, if, what, what happened to Ebra and, and, and that's the kind of thing for me that will be going on there will be pockets that do that. there'll be people that set up these oh do you know what we're, we're a UK organization and what we're going to do is use our influence in the government we can kind of house and like semi-adopt lots of kids from Southeast Asia and, 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 and the African continent to bring them yeah. here going to our football account. We'll look after them. They'll, they'll board with us. They live, we're going to buy a big house. We'll have like 20 of them living in here. Mm-hmm. That's That sounds like half a pedophile ring to me, or it could be. Exactly. And, and, and if it's not being investigated and looked after, 
it's that's what the and the clubs and you know what I mean one or two players are the, the best players get left alone the rest of them are ours like yeah I'm not even trying to make a joke of it like legitimately that's what I think goes on and yeah can I just say one thing sorry yeah. can I just say one thing because I just want to make sure that um and I think the thing is to say like this is such a complicated issue like you just highlighted like all of these things that can it's it's about the type of people who are associated and kind of brought into it. And it's just by you're guilty by association. So now the entire football world is guilty by association by this. But you're not held but the thing is that when somebody when you're viewed by society, you're not held by your highest standards, you're viewed you're kind of held by your your lowest common denominator. It's the weakest link approach. And so actively our responsibility is to make sure that our weakest link is is not a fucking pedophile ring. And like, sorry to swear, but I'm being genuine. Yeah. And I'm laughing. I'm laughing because it's not funny. It's, it's just like, yeah. of course, it's. I look at it this way, right? I don't. If I'm responsible for somebody else's child for, mm-hmm. for ten minutes, mm-hmm. a day, a month, a year, I treat them as my own, and my own yeah. children. I'm beyond overprotective in in the sense mm-hmm. of. I don't let my kids stand on. They come to my room. I don't let them stand up on my bed in case they trip yeah. on the. In case they slip, trip on the duvet and fall off the bed and hurt themselves. I almost don't let them play. I'm so scared they'll fall. Like they chase each other. I stop them. Yeah. They're like, why? In case you run into each other. In case you fall and break your arm. In case you run into the wall. Like I'm so scared of them hurting themselves. If anyone looks at my children when I'm out, most people look at, ah, oh, they're cute. I'm like yeah. in my head, like, why are you smiling at my kid? So I'm probably OTT. But what I do mm-hmm. know is that if anybody ever targets my children, they'll see my protective nature and they won't look at my kids because they'll be like, he's on point. He's looking here. He, he's he's asking questions about everything. Oh, mm-hmm. it's, it's for me, it's the it's the kind of, yeah, you go off and play. I'm just over here working on my phone. Like They're, exactly. the, ones, they're the kids that are vulnerable. You know, it, exactly. and, whatnot. and my point is, if I'm looking, I should teach children kickboxing. If I'm looking after your children, I treat them as, but I will protect them with my life. You know, and you need to make sure that people that are running academies that are helping to move kids, you know, kids that you're being boarded, you know, boarded with in, in academies. The, mm-hmm. the if, if you're moving, and look, it's nothing wrong with taking a very talented lad from the Ivory Coast and yeah. moving into a brilliant academy in Italy. But everybody no. from the, the Ivorian base right through to where he's living and staying in, in, in Italy needs to be vetted and transparently looked at in every single step of the way to make sure that child is completely and utterly 110 percent safe and do you know what if it's a change laws change laws like yeah the fact that you know we can't get a, a world-class talented young player from this country into that country because of visa problems speak to the governments and be like look we're trying to protect exactly. here against child sex trafficking allow the allow them to have a special type of visa if they're at a certain level of football club I don't, you get what i'm saying there's, there's yeah. such easy solutions but it seems like yeah. I don't know why, but maybe just maybe those easy, easy solutions allow these bad things to happen, and that's exactly. Part of the plan. And now I'm I'm getting really sort of deep and sort of conspiracy <laughs> deep, like yeah, deep yeah, throat yeah. conspiracy. But at the same time, for me, it's deep state, deep throat conspiracy, deep space. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, deep state. <laughs> yeah, deep, yeah, but it's just yeah. For me, it's it's something that needs to be looked at, my friend. Listen, my brother, really sure. good call. Thank you for coming on, my guy. Really appreciate sure. it, buddy. Yes. Thank you very All much right, indeed. Yes. Thank you. Look, I know this is a very difficult subject and, and it's a hard one to talk about. And I'm sure more is going to come out. And there's, you can just go onto Twitter and just type in Roman um, Molina's name and you can look at all the different allegations that have been claimed and stuff. And it's one of those things for me that I just, I, I, I don't want to see this go away. I don't want to see this fall away. Tweet about it, push it, ask the journalists for more and, and see what comes out. It does need to happen. There's no doubt. I know there's more of you waiting to come on. I don't have any more time for calls today, but thank you to everybody that's tuned in, to everyone who's hit the like button. Friday night on the terrace, 6 p.m. tonight. Make sure you're tuning in. i got to get myself down there now. Until then, take care. Goodbye. God bless.